A baleful eye peers out from the darkness, its gleam hinting at a weird intelligence and unnerving malevolence. Let me dine upon your magic, or the outcome might be tragic! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Lost Mine of Fendelver Villains. Today we'll talk about an insane subterranean monster that dwells underneath Tresendar Manor. And in the end I'm going to share a story from one of my games, where Nothic accidentally became the center of an entire drama. You're watching Loose and Dice, and I'm your bard, Folger. Nothic encounter can easily become a quick, meaningless fight. But let's try and generate a couple ideas on how to make it memorable. Most times a Nothic is content to watch, weighing and assessing the creatures it encounters. It might speak to the party from the shadows, the echoes in the caves not quite letting them locate the source. It can use a weird inside ability to know that a fighter has a potion in his pouch. You've got yummy in your pocket. I won it. I made my Nothic obsessed with magic items, collecting and admiring them, whether it's a scroll or wand or anything else. And it worked really well. Before I came up with all this and ran it as it is, the parties always killed him, terrified by the look of it. So I came up with not showing him right away, starting the encounter as a social one. And as soon as they realize that killing them is not necessarily what the Nothic wants, but instead only their magic items, they might get interested in this creature and try to engage in a dialogue. If treated well and maybe given a gift, Nothic might even share some useful information about the hideout. But of course, if things get brutal, you'll want Nothic to go down with dignity. This is a rare and very interesting monster. I mean, how often a guy like this will appear in your campaigns? So you might want to buff him up a little bit, especially if you know that for your party this fight is going to be a piece of cake. First of all, if your party has really strong melee players, consider giving Nothic climb speed. It can then use an uneven cave-like ceiling to get out of their reach and possibly gain cover behind the outcrops. Remember that Nothic is outnumbered, it has only one turn, while your party has three or four. Given that he has telepathical abilities, I would let him know right away who has the lowest constitution stat and strike that person with a rotten gaze ability. Here's another tactic it can do. It can use hide action to get lost in the ceiling of the cave, maybe using some narrow tunnels to relocate. Then it can secretly use weird insight on somebody and gain the effects of dodge action against that player's next attack, as it kind of learns his intentions. And then the Nothic drops right onto that character, slashing him with its claws, with advantage from a surprise attack. Now the story as I promised. A player character, a dragonborn sorcerer named Denatar, gave Nothic a magic item and he was very amused with it. Denatar became pretty fond of Nothic and convinced him to go with him, promising to share magic. And so they started traveling together and Denatar used the monster's weird insight to his own advantage and Nothic was pretty happy as well. As sessions go by, I always try to adjust the story so that stuff that my players are really excited about becomes essential, tying their backstories into the module, making them relatives with villains, tracking tiny decisions they make so they backlash in the end really hard and the players strongly feel their impact. So that's what happened here. Denatar became really close with Nothic and interested in the nature of his existence. So I've decided to play with that. When Denatar came into the Wave Echo Cave, the spirits of long-gone Dragonborn wizards showed up. They looked in his direction and said something about breaking the curse, which was his and not theirs. Denatar didn't quite understand what was going on, but when he finally got to the Forge of Spells, it was sealed shut. He tried to figure it all out and met Mormask the Wraith, who told him the true story. Mormask recognized Nothic, which confused Denatar even more. It turned out that Nothic was one of the mages who destroyed the Forge of Spells. Back then his name was Spellscale Asmund, a dragonborn wizard who served at Neritar Castle among the sages of Stargazer Academy, but exiled for his daring methods of searching ancient secrets. He became an adventurer and explorer of ruins and gathered a company of talented spellcasters around him. They were never concerned about the fates of those surrounding them. All they cared about was arcane lore and power. At some point they tried to get to Fandelver, but Mormisk, protecting it at the time, refused to let them in, knowing Spellscale all too well from the years they've spent studying in Shadowdale together. They had a fight and Mormisk won. Years later, Asmund joined the horde of orcs marching south. He was the one who led them to the mine. With the help of the forge, he tried to create an artifact of horrific power, able to suck the magical weave from the very land. 
It was then when Mormonsk attempted to break the ritual. Its magic backlashed at Asmund, crippling him for ages. But Mormonsk paid with his life. The final shock for Denatar was to learn that Asmund was his ancestor. Finally, it made sense to Denatar. Now he knew that the Dragonborn spirits weren't talking to him, but to Nothic or Spellscale Asmund. These were his companions who died that day, tied to the place by the curse that was created by Mormask's sacrifice. And the blood Denatar and Nothic shared was probably the reason why Nothic came along with him so easily, and the reason the fate led him to this place. Now the only way to release the spirits and open the Forge of Spells was to spill Spellscale's blood before the gates. Nothic was confused and scared by all these spirits. Denatar gave him a comforting hug one final time. For the first time, his insane smile faded, his green eye looked down at the blade in his chest. He perished in Denatar's arms, while the spirits dissolved around them. The gate opened before Denatar, and he stepped inside. The first thing crafted in the Forge of Spells after his reclamation was a sword forged for Denatar. He grabbed its hilt and felt the magic inside. The sword was sentient. Denatar mentally reached inside and got an answer. Denatar. It was the best ending to a campaign we've ever had. Denatar sacrificed his friend, but got a sword that held his soul, thus regaining his friend in a form of magic item, and opening insane possibilities for role-playing in future campaigns. And the best thing about it is that the part with the sword was completely improvised. I didn't plan it, it just came naturally, and we were both blown away by how cool the story wrapped up. And that's it for today's video. Tell me about your experience with this monster, share your D&D stories, ask questions, and I will definitely answer them. These are the names of my patrons, and I'd like to say thank you so much for supporting Loose and Dice. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.